hello, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I have a small project, or three actually, three projects uh, on the Morris 1100 behind me. And uh, you might note that the car looks like it's sagging down on one side. Uh, that's not a coincidence. The shader valve uh, on the hydroelastic suspension um, is leaking and uh, I've got to replace the shader valve and, and pump it back up again. Uh, while I'm in there, um, I'm also going to replace the wheel bearing on that side, which was causing problems on the trip from Sydney. I'm also going to, uh, what's the other job? Uh, speedo cable. So the speedo cable that broke on the same journey. And uh, the, the idea there is that I'm going to get it uh, ready to be registered here in WA and, uh, and be able to use it more. It's just been sitting gathering dust and I really want to get behind the wheel. So that's the work for today. Apologies for the background noise. There's a uh, next door, the next door neighbour is uh, doing some sort of work in the in the garden with a machine, um, and it's fairly constant. So um, apologies in advance. So I'm going to get set up. I'm going to jack the front of the car up. Oh, sorry, the side of the car up, and uh, get the wheel off, uh, suspension apart, and um, uh, and either attend to the speedo or the um, the bearing. Taking the front apart um, gives me options because you've got to do it anyway to get to the speedo. Uh, while we're talking about speedo, I'm just so it just so happens I've got a mini gearbox for my mini, and this is this is where the speedo drive is. So it's on the passenger side, and uh, same side as the the problematic bearing. So got to get into in via the uh, the wheel well to be able to unscrew the speedo from there. All right, so without further ado, I'll get set up. Okay, now step one has been to get the suspension on full droop, as you can see there. Um, I need to get to this wheel, uh, but full droop is so that I can uh, properly recharge the suspension. Uh, if it's suspension under pressure, it'll be much more likely to, to piss fluid out or piss all the fluid out so um, that's the that's the logic method to the madness there okay now there's usually a specific place to get these caps off without um, turn the wheel around you can see it here so that you can um, jimmy the cap off without damaging your very special trim away safely somewhere. Alright. Three quarters of an inch. usually better to, to break um, the wheels on the ground, but anyway, there, this does work. some gloves on before I get too far in. I ought to get uh, a magnetic tray as well. Go grab one of those with the gloves. Those of you who are curious, this rides on 155812. Okay. 
let me uh, got some rubbing in there which you'd expect with the uh, suspension height down um, you'll note if I'm not sure I'll bring you in this is upside down it's supposed to be the other way up um, so that it hits the bump stop if it, yeah, so that the bump stop will hit that uh, uh, that it's usually a cup shape now it's upside down because um, I was a bit unkind to it um, a bit unkind to the threads when I had it apart and I wanted to get the uh, the, the top ball joint separated I did whale on it a bit and it um, damaged the thread so uh, put it on back backwards and um, part of this job is I'll, I'll set that right all right come back with gloves and uh, gloves and magnetic tray okay so the the logical next step is to uh, get this caliper off okay and it's um, from memory a couple of bolts at the back nice new looking brake lines on here In fact, these brake shoes look good too. Disc pads, I mean, not brake shoes, you idiot. So it's um, time to get that top ball joint hardware off. Not three quarters. Well, that's met must be metric then. Let's have a look at the uh, uh, eighteen. <laughs> no, eighteen mil. Thank you, uh, BMC. chase threads on this thing. So that goes that way up. Um, not too terrible. I just could not get it started. And yeah, it's starting. I won't do it now though. All right. Um, I also want to take the tie rod end off there and that's going to be well, maybe a 9 sixteenths can't see that um, I only need the uh, upper ball joint off. I think. Yeah, I don't know, I can't remember. Um, I'm the washer on here. Strange place to find a split washer. There, there you have it. Um, no, no, you take, I'm taking the whole hub off, so I do want everything off. Going in under here.
Okay, okay, okay. Um, be interesting to see how hard this uh, top ball joint is to to get off. Last time it was sort of a stuff of nightmares. I'm not sure if this is going to work. It's a dirty great big socket. Breaks in the way. Let's get that behind somehow. Let's get that in there. It's better. There you go. Now, is that just going to come up nicely out of there? Yes, it is. I'm not sure whether you can see that. So that's coming out of there already. It's just a matter of getting this um, tie rod out. Um, I might give, I might put the nut back on. Give a little love tap. I think that's how I did last time. Wake up, man! Wake up. So. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to need to take that off. <clears throat> I reckon I'll be able to swing it out of the way. We'll get uh, cotter pin, cotter pin out. We'll get that back this nut off. Back the nut off and see if we can get the shaft out. Size is this thing? It's pretty big, huh? It's a 32. Um, I'm going to get my big breaker bar type set up. Paper fit here, and we'll try and get that lower ball joint out like so. There we go, and that should stay behind with any luck. A little love, love tap here. Comes the oh, off comes the front of the hub disc um, and that tapered tapered washer kind of thing. Now this bit we should be able to leave the leave the shaft behind. Make sure it's pushed in. There you go. So. Expose 
exposes our bearings there. Man, that seal is rooted. We've got all manner of grease and crap coming out of there. Hmm. Look at the sand chunks in there too. That needs cleaning out. I will get I will get some rags and some brake clean. Okay, we're back in. Um, I'll put a bit of a, a catch tray underneath there because it's going to get pretty messy. It's probably a bit better. It's a bit of ASMR experience as well with the gritty, sandy crap stuck to the outside. Okay, just not sure what we've even got here for. Let's see if we can get the seal out. Yep. It's certainly moving. Might reuse that. <laughs> Kidding. in the pile. Look at these press in and out. I'm not sure whether you can see what I'm seeing there. But there's two two bearings side by side in there. that seal out on that side. Hopefully it's as amenable as the other one. Mm -hmm. There's some movement there, there you go. Do to get these out. I'm going to measure the thickness of each of these bearings as well. Compare them to the ones I've got, the new ones. Um, quick, um, I might just go get a little punch and um, okay, let's see what happens. You're going to be way in the way. Um, I might, I might bring you back. You're not going to, not going to have a decent view anyway. So, bring you back when I've had a bit of a play. Okay. So the bearings, the bearings each just tapped um, the 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 inner bearing tapped out that way. The outer bearing tapped out that way. Now just having a look inside here, what do we got? Hmm. What have we got? Is that... Let's go back in this way. Um, looking in here. Right. Okay, so these are the races there. And is that a spacer in between or doesn't look like it? Can you see that? It's a strange little arrangement. 
I mean, how, unless they are completely bottomed in there, how would you have the right clearance? Got to ask these questions now because I'm going to be putting it back together. Okay. This is a decent shoulder in there that I can try and get those races out. Problematic glove. Glove issues going on here. Okay, so let's just give it gentle taps. It'd be easier on a bench, but needs must. I'm just working my way around. That was a satisfying sound of a, a bearing race coming out. I didn't have to flog that too hard. Okay, so clearly what happens is that these tighten down on each other. If you can see that. And that's the clearance, or well, that's the specification there. I'll knock this one out. Look at my bloody glove. I can't stand it, folks. <laughs> it's, cha it's getting changed. Stand by. Yeah, sometimes with this, uh, I wouldn't call it an obsession, but this glove interest. I might be slightly neurodiverse. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Wasn't hard at all, as you could see. Gonna get the new bearings and have a look at comparison. In fact, I'm gonna go get my micrometer, micrometer. And these are gonna get measured. What, what I'll show you first though is get that nice and clean later, but That's a spacer in there, I think. Beef. The famous spacer. Right. Okay. New kit, which I just dumped on the floor. It has a split pin. It has a new late style dust arrester that slows the ingress of dirt and crap. Two seals. And here are our new bearings, they look similar, which is good. I'll grab one out. You're, gonna, you're loving this camera work, I can tell. Okay. I have a uh, micrometer. Digital. First bearing. You don't need the race, you just need the bearing. It's measuring across here. Twenty one oh two, twenty one oh two, twenty one oh one. Oops. Twenty one. No, it's twenty one oh two. Twenty one point oh two millimeters. In fact, I'll measure the other one. That now to give you give you a total. Okay, so yeah, yep. Twenty-one 
Make sure it's still zeroed. Let's just zero that again. Twenty one point twenty point nine nine. Twenty one oh oh. Well, let's run with twenty one. So it's forty two point oh two. Forty two oh two. Now what do these do? Twenty point nine four. Twenty point twenty point eight nine. 20.89, okay. Put 20.89 there. Twenty point nine. Oops. Twenty eighty nine. Twenty eighty nine. Uh, so that's uh, forty one point seven eight. Forty one seven eight versus forty two. O2. So it's um, 24.24 millimeters. That's appreciable. Hmm. That is. If this is an arrow assembly. What's it going to do? Yeah, I feel like it needs to, it should be thicker. If it was a, a wider assembly, it would be better, but riveting viewing viewers, riveting. Okay, so I'm going to, I've got some grease, I'm going to clean that out, get a new rag. I'll we'll go the, the hot pink number. It's still a bit of a mystery to me how far to bash these in, these races. I'll have to rewind the footage because I'm not sure whether they were riding up to there, up to that, up to that spacer. Never a good thing. Don't viewers don't don't bash it in back in bloody crookedly. It goes badly for you. Okay, let's get it out.
I don't feel cleanliness is next to godliness here at the moment. again. Of course you don't want any contamination at all. It's going in nicely, slowly, evenly, all those sort of adjectives. It's just a light press fit, you call it. It's, um, it's driving me a bit crazy trying to work around you guys though. You're in my way. Yeah, imagine doing this in a caravan park on the side of the road. It's getting in there. You can see that. Almost all the way in, I'll just bring it home. It's good that I've look, now I've got a bit of a shoulder to rest the punch on. there. Certainly just like I'm hitting something hard on the top. The question is whether that spacer just moves, it kind of floats back and forth. And it feels pretty solid. Turn up against that. All right, we'll go for the other side, which is like that. This is where you kind of just want to make sure that you've not you're not missing anything before you get too far down this track. Let's tap it to app. All right, so just needed to be a little bit patient, and um, that's all tapped in there nicely. I am going to just give it a precautionary tap. See if I can seat that any better on this side. It um, it did seat a little easy for my liking on this side, um, whereas this one didn't quite. So I'm just going to give that a few love taps and then continue. Okay. Let's proceed. You see, I cleaned up nicely, so it's ready to accept. I'm going to quickly look up how much grease these need because it's come with grease, but it's only 
really small amount. I'm not going to use that grease anyway. I'm going to use my own. Alrighty, I'll bring you back. Okay, my little bit of research there didn't yield any surprises. So um, what I'm going to do is the inner first. I'm hoping that you can see some of that. Yeah, good. So uh, yeah, so just a reminder, you've got you've got uh, seals, dust seals, and on this one it's got the little plastic extra. Um, so it's just uh, no need to go over the top on the grease. It's going to get it's going to get a reasonable amount here. Reasonable, he says. Reasonable's fairly subjective. Okay, and there's your bearing. These are a different kind of. Uh, arrangement to what I'm used to with tapered. Similar principle of needing uh, as much grease as you can get in all elements of the bearing. So, in fact, I've tried and proven method would probably work on this cup of grease in your hand and, and work it in like that. Whoa! Yeah, that's probably not the best idea. Because you'll pop your ball you'll pop your balls out. You'll pop three balls out there. <laughs> well good intentions. But, uh, I'm kind of kneading that in. What what that actually did as I as I forced it in like that, it um push the balls out. Okay, so that's um, plenty there. Okay, um, and now for the grease seal, I am going to wipe this shoulder down. We don't want we don't want too much preventing it seating properly. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Let me show you. And the um, these seals these seals have only one way of going in and it's that it's that way. This way here is um, I'm not sure of the principle of, um, of whether grease actually helps hold that in, but that's where that goes. I'm going to put that in now. Okay, that's seated in there now properly. And uh, the last the last part before it goes back on is to um, is to have that in there like that. All right. Now um, yeah, so put that in. just before I reassemble. Don't let me forget it's something I would do. Again, you've seen that's the principle. And to think I thought that this had tapered bearings on it. How wrong I was. I even tried to order tapered bearings. I think the guy laughed at me. But in this game, in the game of uh, amateur mechanicing, you can't afford to um, be too insistent. OK, 
This one feels quite different to the other one. They're both the same. Oh, they are not both the same. There's one with a, um, I think I might be putting the wrong one on. I'm thinking this one goes better. Goes much better with that. I've got a ridge here. So I'll show you the, um, this is the other one. No ridge, ridge holds plastic shield in better. Okay, reverse. Time for reverse. <laughs> okay, time for reverse. You guys don't you guys don't want to watch me try and get the seal out without damaging it, do you? Yay! Elation. Yeah, the bearing is bound to fall out. Okay, so amateurs and professionals alike, the uh, the dust shield, sorry, the the dust. Bloody seal, the grease dust tub seal with the ridge goes on the inside. I'm going to fight with that and bring you back. Okay, happy with that? I'm much happy with that. It's like I bought one. And let's go to the outer. Back to the outer. Bearing jumped out on me. all good and um, get the seal this seal in okay sit wrap what I've decided to do is tidy up all this greasiness get rid of it and have a crack at the speedo cable while it's all apart while it can get, gives me extra room now where is the speedo cable? I hear you ask. I will see if I can show you. Um, right, so. <clears throat> the easiest way is if I illuminate this way. Whoops. If I illuminate, you need to look in there. Can you see it? I can see it. Let's um, see if I can get a better view in there. I'll try and get a zoom. Let's have a look. Take this glove off. Oh, hip cramp. All right, how about this? Okay, so it's beyond. See it now? I want to say it's just there. It's just not focusing though. I might reach my hand in and try and point at it. Actually, I can't put a light in there. So maybe turn the light up like that. Hmm. It's not helping. Um, my hands on it in there. There. In there. In there. There you go. So it's, I've got to undo that. Now, um, I think I'm going to take gloves off because these are greasy. And I'll probably just put grease all over it, which is going to help. No end. Um, not going to be very photogenic session here so uh, i'm just going to have a crack at it without you guys sorry i'll bring you back 
Okay, set wrap. Now I was able. Let's see if we can get you in. It's not that easy. Um, I was able to get a set of. First of all, I took the drive shaft out. That gave me some clearance in here to get my hand in. Um, but I set vice grips uh, off the new cable, so I didn't. You don't want them so tight as to crush the um, uh, crush the little cup, the threaded cup that goes over the cable end. Um, you want it just to mesh. Now I'll, I'll grab it and show you. I'll grab it and show you. Here we go. So this bit that screws into your gearbox. You want to get the vice grips to the point where when they lock. There's no crush at all. It's just enough to mesh with the little teeth on this. And um, you literally can only move it a millimeter at a time, but that's, that's enough to, to crack it off. And I was able to get it done. So now I just wanna, I don't wanna get too, too rash here with um, pulling that cable out. It might be prudent, I haven't checked it out yet, but it might be prudent to, um, tape the new cable to the end of it so that when you pull it up I can't see it down there can I? Okay, so where is this cable coming through? I think it comes through the firewall here you can't see that one there yeah the one without a grommet Let's double check. If it does, yeah, it's, that's it there. Well, that's pretty basic, actually. That'll just pull up. Something stopping it. Rad hose. Light. Let there be light. This is him. And he's, uh, he's getting pinched between the rad and the uh, hydroelastic pipe. Let's move it this way. There we go. And how does it just come out here? Some jobs are actually a lot easier than what you expect them to be. This is one of them. Oh, alrighty. And just out of curiosity. I know you're curious as well. That's a broken piece. And that cable is just drier than a dead dingo's donger. Yeah, it's just twisted right off. Okay, that's rubbish. Let's get the new one. Come with me. The reverse of that process. I better, better, better just bloody, better check the ends, make sure it's the same. Make sure it's the same length as well. That's the old one. Yep, those are the... I think from memory, I've got a slightly longer one. Yeah, it's a few inches longer. Sure, why you'd want to do that, but this is what it is. Okay, I'm just going to reverse that process and bring you back. Okay, I'm back in the workshop. 
on day two. And I've got two words, grommets. So um, I put a halt to work yesterday because I don't have the three grommets I think I should reinstate, which are on the speedo cable and one for each on the heater hoses. So I'm going to just take a little trip out and uh, see if I can find something that I can use. I recognise that I'm not going to get the actual items, actual BMC items, but I think I'll find something that's close. So um, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to move, I'm going to move the, move the Nissan out of there, and I'm going to take the Model T on a tuning run. So um, one of those things I'm allowed to do on the registration is take it on tuning. So it will um, it will go to the service station for some fuel, and um, I'll then end up at the um, parts store, which is nearby. So, that's the plan. Alright, I have two packs of grommets. I have um, some 3 8 you know, I did measure the firewall hole before I bought those. And um, I have these 19 by 24s for, for the heater hoses. Um, hopefully those will suit. What I've noticed though, um, with the additional light on the situation, this is the um, this is the firewall hole that uh, the speedo cable goes through, and you'll note it's um, it's got something resembling a maybe melted grommet. So I'm going to just now try and get that out of there, um, and hopefully it doesn't open up too much more of a hole. Otherwise, my grommet. Um, is not going to fit so there were others so I can go back if I need to so I'm going to get into that now it's pretty crusty there we go I got that. there you go that's a grommet that's sort of decayed a little bit left on there. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to say what I've now got is a gaping firewall hole which is not going to fit that grommet so I need I need a, a bigger one with a, with a similar size uh, internal Right. Hmm. Okay. That's what I need to do before I go further. Yeah, so I've got persisting grommet issues in my firewall. Um, that grommet for the choke cable that you can see down there is um, it's looking pretty hammered. Um, I'll see if the I'll see if the ones that I bought for the speedo cable are going to fit. Uh, and then I also note the accelerator cable, that, that one's looking okay. Um, but of course there's a heater hoses that they need doing. So today is the day of um, mission creep. I'm going to fix some grommets here. Alright, slight change in plans. So for the grommets, I, uh, I hopped online for my mini part supplier. and. Uh, he was able to supply the, those grommets, the exact ones I needed. So I've ordered those. They'll be here in a few days. Um, but what I'll do is I'll crack on and uh, put all the front um, hub suspension back together again. Um, yeah, and I'll yeah, tighten up the speedo cable. Uh, it just won't pass through the firewall. And at least that part of the job's done. Okay, sit rep. Speedo cable is in on this end. Okay, I don't know that you can gonna be able to see in the, up there. Yeah, there you go. Um, I ended up taking the, uh, the splined uh, part of the drive shaft that goes onto the uni uh, uni joint there. They gave me that extra bit of clearance to, to get in there. But uh, yeah, that was that was trickier than getting it undone because. 
um, it, it didn't want to go on, like every millimeter was a bit of a struggle. But anyway, it's on, I will continue. Okay, so first step will be to put, um, to put this back. Now it's, um, these, these plastic, plastic bits slip over the end of the, uh, the uni cups and then the, uh, the U-bolts drop in and go through like that. So, um, while I'm in here, I might just give these, uh, uni joint uh, cups just a little dab of grease, just to say that I've been in there. May as well, eh, while you're in there. Oh! Do try not to um, drop them. The last thing you want is any contamination in there. Right, so um, I'm just going by feel here. It's definitely on. All right, we've got a work in progress here. So um, I barged you out of the way so I could get my fat hands in there and um, so I was able to get the um, the U-bolts on um, it was a little bit tricky I'll be if I'm completely honest I'm just gonna tighten by hand um, the uh, the secret here was uh, dropping the gearbox into neutral so that it can turn so you can get the optimum angle of the dangle so I will I think Drop it back into gear when I go to tighten these properly, but um, they don't need a lot of torque. They're um, um, they are on the equivalent of a nylock nut, so it uh, it's designed not to run off when you uh, when you tighten it. And the reason it doesn't get tightened down, in fact, I'll look at the torque specs, but it's just intuitive. Uh, it's in a plastic. Um, What would you call it? It's a little plastic locator for the, you can see it on this side here, the, the U-bolt sort of um, is positioned, uh, it's sort of the plastic holder sort of places it in the right position. Um, and clearly if you if you really talk down on it, that plastic's going to smash, so note the extensions, extensions are your friend. Two hands required. Yep. Um, I can do it here. There we go. And then I'll be able just to. That's better. Much better. All right. Job done on that. Our next step is to. Um, Get the drive shaft in. That's just literally a pick up the drive shaft. Oops, sorry again. We're going to get a drive shaft. Yep. I'm literally just going to put a tiny bit of grease on the splines, bearing in mind that as this as suspension um, moves up and down, you'll have your Shaft sliding in and out. There we go. Shaft in. A bit of uh, grease action. And a bit of dust shield for our top ball joint. Make sure the bottom dust shield's on. Okay. 
And so what I can do here is bring this over. Just um, clearing off any potential contamination. It's been sitting here for nearly a week. Okay, so it's going to be maneuvered into the bearings like this, trying not to push my bearings out. There we go. That's in. Drop the bottom board out. In top ball joint, like so now I'm just gonna find the hardware. I might need a jack here because what happens is the um, as you try to tighten the ball joint down, this has a propensity just to turn until that taper is in there properly. What you do is you get a jack under it and it forces that taper in there and it holds it. Okay, resuming the action. So this is now on the right way. Uh, I've got a split washer there. I'm just going to get a jack under here now. Lift this up and that will uh, tend to catch that in the taper and then I can tighten it. So I'll mo move this in. Um, Okay, we're going two-handed again. You wouldn't want to be a one-armed man, I tell you what. That's going to be us. Okay. Um, I must do up the uh, tie rod. Okay, um, bottom ball joint. Get the jack out of here. Okay. All right, that's a uh, bottom ball joint here. That was th uh, three quarters, I think. Next will be the disc, brake disc. And that needs a clean up. Look at the back of it. Have you been saying on? I'll show you the back of it. Maximum contamination. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah, um, that seal at the back was obviously fairly knackered. Um, that means uh, we've got some brake pad contamination too. Let's see if I can get that out with one hand. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that off camera. I think I actually have to pull these pins out to get the, uh, the pads out. So, alright, decontamination of the disc. Behind you, watch out. Okay, there's a jack moving in, bringing the jack. All right. Torques are 150 foot pounds. So, um, a little trusty torque wrench, which isn't going to play nicely against the front guard. Uh, might be 
Might be better to turn the wheel, turn the wheel in. Ow. Bring it up on the jack momentarily. So there's uh, no issue pulling the um, pulling the hub in. See where our split pin hole is. Uh, yeah, it can probably need to go just a little bit more for that, but that's fine. Moment of truth, keen viewers. Let's bring this up. Fingers crossed, eh? Uh, Eureka! That's fixed. That is solid. <laughs> Yippee! I am so stoked. <laughs> You've got no idea. No idea. Okay, so um, we'll get the split pin in. Um, I just can't believe it. Yep. That's sorted. Uh, let's get the split pin in and brake caliber back on, clean up the brake um, rotor, and then um, that job is done, folks. I'm so pleased with that. Perfect. When I say perfect, it's perfect. Just grab a New split pin and put that in. Okay, well, there you go, all done. Wheel off, brakes back together with a good cleanup to decontaminate. Okay, so I thought I'd just bring you in. I've decon decontaminated these. Now, ideally, ideally you would have new ones. Um, the one I'm showing you right now is the one that wasn't contaminated, and this is the one that was contaminated. It was it hasn't um, it hasn't become ingrained in the um, in the pad, so I think it'll be right. Um, it's certainly, if I do experience any braking related issues, and what I would expect is if the performance of this side isn't as good as the other, I'll get a level of pulling to one side. But um, given that it was completely contaminated and I wasn't getting any pulling, I think we'll be fine. Let's not overdo it. Um, but yeah. Uh, last thing, you can see that's corroded already after I've given it a bit of clean um, and that's only been hours which is unusual, it's a really dry day today. I'm uh, going to give that one last going over and then I can put the caliper all back together again, lovely. I'll just um, clean the rag. That grinding noise, this just has to be tightened down. I've got the caliper on. So there's the uh, contamination, there's not any, so I think we're good. Right, fiddly, fiddly job now. Getting the, um, getting the pads back into those calipers. It's not something I'm going to be able to give you much of a look at, given that I don't want to stretch this hose as I'm doing it, and I'll be in your way, so I'll bring you back. Okay, so the pads are, pads are back in, 
you've got to pull those two split pins out and they come out the back of the caliper. Um, now I'm just uh, in the process of tightening that caliper back up and that will be the end of that. So what I'm going to do next, next job, when I button all this up, I'm going to leave the um, leave us hanging full droop and I'm going to have a crack at getting suspension level recharged and a new Schrader valve. Okay, for the third job, now this is a suspension issue that I've got. You'll see this part of the hydroelastic system here is a, it's a Schrader valve which you um, need to obviously provide a valve. Um, as you inject the hydroelastic fluid in there, that's where it goes in obviously. Um, and being a valve it doesn't let it come back out again, which makes a whole lot of sense. So the problem with this one is it's leaking. So you can see that I've just touched the valve cap there and you can see some leakage on me. It's been a slow leak so it's slowly lost suspension height. In fact you can see some corrosion. Let's see if I can zoom you in. Um, you can see some corrosion there in the end of that. So that's got to come out. Um, so the kit that I've got for this job is oh, grommet? No. So I've got a, a pack of um, various valves because I don't know exactly which one it is, and a, uh, a valve removing tool so that just screws in. So without any further ado, I'm going to try and set you up, and we are going to have a crack at this job and I can guarantee you it's not going to be straightforward it's down here it's not going to be in focus either let's try that okay okay so it's engaged So we're getting some fluid coming out. It's just a dribble. Which is good. It's not a freaking... It's a bit of a flood. You can see how much is coming out there. So uh, hopefully, hopefully I've got the right valve. I might just leave it droop because it's um it's threatening to spray everywhere. As it depressurizes. All right. Visual inspection of the valve. So if I can get you out in the light for this. So uh, the rubber's gone and it's knackered. All right. Let's grab a new valve. Put that in pronto. You aren't seeing, I can guarantee you aren't seeing Jack. Sorry. Both hands are required. Again, it doesn't have to be 150 foot pounds, but it has to be seated. Way down in the engine bay. Okay, 
so it's the, behind the drive shaft. Okay, so one of the important things to have in your arsenal is an extension, extendable magnet. That's how you get that retrieved. So, that's tight. Uh, I'll introduce you to my new tool. Let me just put that away. Right, this is the next part. It's a converted grease gun. Uh, notably, um, not useful for a completely empty system. You need a vacuum to get all the air out. Um, but as I've just lost some fluid, and um, we can get the fluid back in there again. It's not an empty system. Um, this, this should suffice. So pour your uh, hydroelastic fluid in there, which in my case will be a 50-50 mix of uh, distilled water, distilled water and coolant. Um, that coolant there makes up 10 litres, so it's highly concentrated. Um, so I'll make up a cup at a time and uh, pour it in there. And then we'll see if we can't get some regassing going on. So you're going to set up there if I can get you to stay. No, you're not. You're going there again. And uh, I'll start with making up some fluid. Okay, so you can see I've got. The, uh, the pump screwed on the end here. What I want to do is just bleed the air out of, the, out of um, this pump system. So before I've done it on tight, I'm bleeding like that. Making sure all the air bubbles are out. Okay, now we'll tighten up. Okay, so it's showing 100 and 140 psi there. I'm just going to now lower down, keep this upright because you must keep it upright. I'm going to lower down. Um, sorry, keep this up. I'm not even helping you guys. So this is where I'm at. That's where I'm pumping from, and um, I'm going to lower down this side of the car back onto the ground and I'm going to be aiming to build pressure relative to the car being supporting its own weight okay I've been pumping away for about 10 minutes and it's taken almost 500 mils um, I'm at the point now of just checking measurements so this is from the workshop manual you can see that what I'm aiming at is 346.1. I'm not sure how I'm going to measure 0.1 of a millimeter with a this sort of a tape measure. Plus I'm on a 6.35, five one hundredths of a mil. Yeah, let's not get that accurate. So I'm looking at about 346, um, 340 to 352. So um, I've got a tape measure here as well. I'll just run that out. Um, right. So I think I'm at, I think I'm at yeah, 331 or something. But it's up from, um, geez, it was, it was way down at 30 something. So that's, um, yeah, it's currently 315. So yeah, more pumping to go, but it's working, which is great. Okay, I'm right on 340. So I'm going to go around the back here. And I bet you it's going to look a little higher on that side that I've just done. So I'm going to adjust the other side um, to 340. Because I always thought it's a little bit low on this side. So I'm going to take off that wheel trim. And uh, give it a measurement. Uh, not before I've rocked the car a bit. I'll just double check before I unhitch the hose and everything. Okay. It's 
just double check. <clears throat> double checking. Um, putting the phone down. Okay, so after it's settled, um, I put some more in and we're now seeing at 342. And I've resettled it again a couple of times and it's consistently there now, so that's good. Come around to this side, and this one's at uh, 326. So um, it's got to come up 12 mil. Um, that's not much, won't take too much. Probably take half of a half of a canister of the fluid. So I'm gonna go and do that and then um, I'll be happy that it's done. And then that's, um, that will literally be all the jobs except for finalizing that speedo cable, getting the right grommets in place. So speedo's all hanging out. Don't let that worry you. Um, I'll take it just for a quick run. I just wanna hear that front suspension hub. So far so good. I came up <coughs> out of the workshop and uh, it sounded perfectly fine. Just, just take a trip around the block. Okay, so the parts are in. I have um, a small grommet for a choke cable. This is for the speedo cable, one inch diameter. Hopefully I can get the uh, the, uh, the threaded part that goes onto the back of the speedo through that. Um, should be okay, I think. And these two are for heater hoses through the firewall. And I bought new heater hoses too, so um, that uh, repair of the one that got almost chafed through will happen time to fit it. Okay viewers, what you're looking at here is grommet action on the firewall. So um, speedo cables in and that's its um, new grommet grommets for these um, heater hoses. Uh, note that the heater hose is now significantly lifted. It was rubbing on here before. So that's lifted up. Um, secret to a good grommet is a very tight seal. Um, it's also the same reason um, the wall rusts enjoyed going to the Tupperware party, as it turns out. So, um, shit of a job, glad it's over. Um, won't have to do them again for another 50 years. All right, <clears throat> so here we are, with um, ride height looking good. I do expect um, some slight sagging over time as the air, if, if there is air in the system, it'll very slowly leak out, just like air in a tire leaks out. Um, mostly finished now, so mostly finished, there's, um, there's a couple of things, let me jump in here, let me just unzoom that, um, so we have our, so we have the dash all back together, now this is supposed to be a horn, now, I know that was a very expensive piece, I think it was $250 or something, but it's Chinese rubbish and it doesn't work. So I'm going to get a, um, a Land Rover a column mounted horn um, for there. Uh, so I'll just, um, just start her up here. Okay, it's running very nicely. Um, now I'll take you for a quick spin. Jump a seat belt on here. Yeah, so uh, it's the horn 
that needs repair and um, the seat is um, doesn't feel like it's bolted down properly and it kind of rocks back and forth strangely all right barefoot driving here because shoes are no good okay hand brakes off reverse down the drive Yeah, so those two small jobs will get me um, to the point of a, a roadworthy, uh, and uh, and I'll flip the car over onto C4C registration. It's the one that gives me 30 um, 30 days per year use of the car, and uh, for the 60 days per year on club use. So you know that's that's plenty for this car. Just you know, occasionally go and pick the kids up from school or whatever. Clutch is a bit juddery, but um, it's not going to. Not going to give too many problems. So, so there we go. We got speed indicated. folks well thanks for watching this video I know it was a long one but I wanted to uh, to catch everything on that those three jobs um, happy that how it's worked out all right so we will see you later see you in the next episode